Well, come on down. You're the next contestant on Price is Right Wrestling. And tonight's grand prize is watching Nikita Lions send wrestling Twitter into a frenzy. And everybody's horniness level is over 9,000. I'm John Rathen with my review, WWE NXT 2.0. Holy fucking shit, the long-awaited NXT 2.0 debut of Nikita Lyons has happened, and my fucking goodness, goodness me, everybody is horny, while well, I'm over here being perfectly innocent. If you believe that, you have not tuned into this channel at all. But if you're tuning in for the first time, hi, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy the fact that I'm going to basically just make a whole bunch of jokes, because that's what I do with NXT 2.0. That being said, outside of a few things, this episode was honestly not that bad. Am I saying everything was great? I still hate some of the backstage bullshit they're doing. I think way too many romance angles are going on. I don't exactly understand why so many romance angles are going on on a wrestling show. I don't understand why everybody's so goddamn horny all the goddamn always. And then Nikita Lyons, yeah, it was well worth the wait, I'll say that. So, uh, Vengeance Day recaps, and then Rex Steiner, he's just like his dad and his uncle. My God, he's such a fucking star. It's just, it's just great. He gets it. He wants to learn, he wants to get better, but he's just got it already. He's just so... It's just captivating watching him just be this good this early. Does he have a long way to go? Absolutely. Does he need a lot more seasoning? Yes, but he's just a fucking natural. Like his dad was a natural. Like his uncle was a natural. And honestly, even though Rick and Scott had their, you know, growing pains, they also were in the dying days of the territory days. Rex just is doing so good, and that's his name. I'm sorry, I'm calling him Rex Steiner because that's his fucking name. I don't really care for the other name, but it is what it is. He does talk about NXT's next big event being in Dallas on April 2nd for Stand and Deliver. You know, I normally don't take Saturdays off. I might actually have to make an exception and take that day off just because... In all honesty, that's a big goddamn deal. That's going to be really, really that's that's going to be a busy fucking weekend. I might actually have to take a whole fucking weekend off if I can actually somehow swing it. <clears throat> but here comes Ziggler. He's here to show the world. He talks about Stan Deliver and how he will be champion when the time comes. He does talk about Rex Steiner being in a Canadian tuxedo, uh, you know, all in uh, denim, because whoever his tailor was was a true genius. Everybody's clicking off because of the bad puns. But I promise you there are more bad puns to come. Um, and, of course, Rex Snyder says, They don't pay me to dress up. They pay me to kick people's asses. That was a good line. Um, and Rex is barred from the main event, apparently. Who is running XT 2.0? Is it Shawn Michaels' left eye or right eye? Um, anyway, we get L.A. Knight. Yeah! Against uh, Grayson Waller with a, a bottle of sangria. I think that's his name. I don't really care, honestly. Um, the few that just won't die. Look, it isn't bad, and Knight can work, and Grayson certainly isn't bad, but the whole idea of Grayson Waller's, you know, like, his gimmick, his whole reason for existing is that everybody hates him. I mean, it's like the Will Ospreay effect. I mean, it's just fucking <clears throat> ridiculous. There is interference, though, and a roll-up with tights, one, two, three. There really wasn't much to this match. It wasn't that it was bad. I just don't care about this feud. But uh, Grayson and the bottle of sangria get laid out, and there you go. That's pretty much it right there. And LA Knight is not done with him. I'm not finished with you. Yeah. And so uh, we get Dakota Kai walking backstage, and then suddenly Wendy Chu is there. And man, Wendy Chu Chu is, you know, just sleeping. Because, of course, because it's funny. It's not, but it's supposed to be funny. They're in the Women's Dusty Classic. Throw the whole Women's Dusty Classic or Dusty Cup or whatever away. Just throw it away. If you're going to include the, this bullshit gimmick and the fact that Dakota Kai, who I think is great, hasn't really meant anything in a while, <clears throat> they're, they, they're struggling to come up with eight teams. And boy, are they struggling a little bit later. So, <clears throat> by the way, Re WrestleMania is the most stupendous two-night WrestleMania in WWE history. So stupendous, they had to get Logan fucking Paul on the show. Check out my Raw review if you want to hear what I say about Logan Paul. And the fact that the Paul family tree should be chopped and burned to the ground. And, you know, everybody should be fixing that family so nobody's allowed to have kids. But anyway, <clears throat> Cora Jade and Raquel Gonzalez are in some woodsy park area. And they're all wood sprites and doing zipline stuff. And why is this happening? There's many money on these vignettes. And, you know, this stuff and these other location shoots or whatever, and like 0.5% of them are maybe worth a good goddamn. 
So, Toxic Attraction in the Lounge. J.C. Jane, my goodness. My fucking goodness, J.C. Jane. Easily my favorite of the group. But they're in the lounge to watch the Women for the Dusty Classic. <clears throat> and it's Eo and Kelly Ray against Amari Miller and Lash Legend in a Dusty Classic Cup quarterfinal whatever. Lash Legend wrestles as well as she talks. And if you saw the Lashing Out uh, show, she wasn't that good. She's not that good in the ring. She looks impressive. Maybe she'll get better. I'm not saying she won't. Mari Miller is fine. Io Shirai, because she's Io Shirai, people will overlook this, but she did botch. At one point, she's like, I'm going to get up on the ropes. Oh, I'm going to botch this. And Lash hit an impressive pump kick. That's about it. But you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. <clears throat> I'm just not that impressed beyond her look with Lash. But uh, Amari took the pin. It was what it was. I mean, there are more offensive matches out there, but yes, Io Shirai is not uh, immune to a botch. Not at all. Even as good as she is, maybe she needs to take some moves out of her arsenal she doesn't feel she can do. Don't do shit you don't care how uh, how you do it. No, wait, that's don't do shit you don't know how to do. But that would apply to a lot of the NXT 2.0 roster because they're as green as grass. <clears throat> Dante Chan talks about Dookie Nuki Hudson. Vengeance will be his. He says it's going to be hard for him to sweep Persia off his feet, or off her feet, rather, when he doesn't have any legs to stand on. Dante Chan actually seems like he could be somebody with some build. He had a really good, um, you know, promo package about his dad dying and wanting to make his dad proud. And then he got fucking laid out. So that's that's great character building right there. I'm not saying the guy's going to main event WrestleMania. He may never be any more than the opening match of WrestleMania, which will probably be a battle royal. But the guys, they, they see something in him, so maybe just be a little more consistent with it. Build up something, and then have him take on Dookie Nookie Hudson. <clears throat> but we have Brooks and Jensen, or Briggs and Jensen, or these, you know, this goddamn cowboy comedy duo. It's fucking stupid. They're doing dating app stuff, and hey, one of them is really awkward, so he's being filmed doing all these dating app videos. Dookie Nookie Hudson took on Dante Chen. Dante blindsides because vengeance will be his. He targets a knee, but then Dookie Nookie takes over and ends up getting uh, the victory with a Razor's Edge variation. Thanks for coming, Dante Chen. So, Hayes and Tricky Ticky Williams show up. When I shoot, I don't miss. Well, he must be one of the Von Erics. Anyway, let's move on from that. Here's Peter Sandy Doon. Sandy Doonkin. That's actually going to be his name now, Sandy Doonkin. So, uh, he, he has the most, I'm done with this. I'm just done with this shit. You what? What are you on about? He wants to face him, but no means no. God, if only some people in the goddamn company would understand that. <clears throat> and Cameron Grimes attacks. I feel a tag match coming on later because we get Grimes versus Tricky Ticky Williams. And Grimes takes everything to the moon when he hits a crossbody. And I think Trick got rocked. That looked really rough. And then hits a cave in one, two, three. So far, it's an episode that has fine matches and some bullshit backstage. And then... They keep doing the Jensen, the Br Brooks and Jensen stuff, and I don't understand why this is on a wrestling program. Why is there so much romance? Ciampa is working out, and Rex Steiner says, well, you're in the zone. I'll leave you alone. And Ciampa says, it's one and one. I need to win, and I need to know who the better man is. And Rex says, I look forward to the rubber match. Oh. So, Chase University. Um, he's talking about intestinal fortitude. I think that's how that saying goes. And he says, it means have some balls, Michael, you dumbass. And it's about Von Wagner. I'm sorry, but an Andre Chase Von Wagner feud sounds like something that I would rather not see ever in ever in the history of wrestling. Nothing against Andre Chase. Plenty against Von Wagner because he's a weirdo. <laughs> and then we get to the big one, Nikita Lyons against uh, Kayla Inlay. I know moves happened in this match. I know some moves happened in this match. And I remember thinking, okay, these are some impressive moves. I couldn't tell you a damn thing that happened in this match besides a kick and the split finish. Everybody lost their minds. Everybody was horny to a spectacular goddamn degree. I was perfectly innocent, just fine, and trying to analyze the damn thing. And then, I, I'm sorry to say this, but she bounces without even moving. I mean, that's more curves than a goddamn, you know, the New Jersey Turnpike or a goddamn, you know, freeway system in Europe. I mean, it's amazing. And WWE knows exactly what they're doing. She knows exactly what she's doing. It, It's a great look. Great look. If she is half as good as she looks, she's going to make millions. <clears throat> is she seasoned? No. But does she have poise? Yes. And 
Am I going to watch almost any match she does from now on? You're damn right. Am I going to remember any of the moves? Probably not. But holy shit. What a debut. What a great look. What do you all think of uh, Nikita Lyons? Because that was certainly something, wasn't it? Many people, when she hit the splits, and boy, what a splits it was, it should have been me. I'm not saying I thought that. Except I, I did. I did think that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the wrestling gods that I thought that. Whew, I will pay for that finish. Okay, I'm going to stop with this because, you know, I'm just being slightly uninnocent here about this. Don't check my Twitter timeline about this. Don't, don't, don't check it. But, whew, boy, that was something else. That was an impressive debut. She may be one of my favorite wrestlers, in all seriousness. If she gets better, great, but maybe I'll pay attention to more moves. But now she doesn't finish like that again. So, Dookie Nuki Hudson kisses uh, Persia Parada. I envy Dookie Nuki. Indy's upset, but apparently her and Dookie Nuki, and I can't help but say Dookie Nuki, if you get that reference, you get that reference. Apparently her um, and Dookie Nuki used to date, and Loomis looks all dejected and walks away. Why is this happening? Why are all these romance angles happening? Robert Stone and Von Wagner were apparently in the void. Scream into the void, motherfucker! <coughs> The Creed Brothers and Malcolm Bivens celebrate their Dusty Cup win. They will face Imperium soon. Imperium shows up. Walter, um, you know, just starts yelling and everything, and we get, and he's yelling at Bivens. Bivens is yelling back and stuff like that, and we're getting this. Imperium is ready to implement the final phase of their plan at Stand and Deliver. And then, while this brawl is happening, Walter gets Bivens, but then Solo Sokoa ends up hitting uh, Walter with a super kick, catches his chop, and kicks him. Okay, and um, there was one funny moment. Bivens just does this, does this scary thing, which I will say that Bivens does understand comedy. It's just, I, I, I'm still not totally sold on him, but I can totally understand why people like him. <clears throat> so, um, this dating app stuff is absolute shit. The former Tesha Price, I keep forgetting her name. I apologize. She is beautiful, I will say that. She takes his pick and says, I'll set up your profile. And then Briggs, Briggs or Jensen or whichever one that is realize he's been, he's been um, taken. Taken by the Headless Horseman. Video package of Joe Wayne Gacy trying to uh, mold Draco Anthony's clay. That's what I got out of this. Harlan Myers is also standing there. So, um, I just want to say this much about the next women, uh, the second women's Dusty Classic match. Casey Catanzaro's hair is a criminal offense in at least 10 states. And given some of the friends she associates with, she should know about criminal offenses. You know, the Capitol riots and all that shit. Casey's so goddamn tiny, she could be like a little mouse trying to sneak into the Capitol building. She sounds like one. So it's Ivy Nile and Tatum P uh, Paxley versus Casey and Caden. And it was a match. Tatum obviously has some potential. Boy, does she ever. Ivy Nile has a great look. Caden is fine. Casey... Has impressive athleticism, and that's it. This match should have not been on NXT TV. I'm sorry. Level up, maybe. Not this. It wasn't good. Casey ends up in the 450. Gets the victory. Then Ivy chokes out Tatum, and I thought she was, uh, you know, done with her, and she was, you know, she was going to kiss her or whatever, because everybody's being horny, apparently, even my thoughts. But Ivy takes Tatum, takes her away, Back, back, back to like, you know, a lab to like make Tatum even better and, you know, put bolts in her necks and stuff like that and make her into Frankenstein. I don't know what I'm on about anymore. <clears throat> um, Solo then says he's going to do something to Walter's ass. That's all I got out of that. LA Knight says he's not done with Waller and then Ciampa and Ziggler had a pretty good match. Well wrestled. Suddenly a cameraman comes in, attacks Ciampa. What the hell's going on? Who could this mysterious cameraman possibly be? I wonder who's associated with Ziggler. Ziggler gets the victory. Match is fine. Go check it out. It was a wrestling match that broke out on the show. And it was Robert. Boy, that was so rude of the cameraman. Yeah, I'm sorry. And then Rex Steiner shows up, and we're going to get a tag match next week? Possibly? Maybe? Fuck, put it on Raw. Put it on Raw! <clears throat> get the ratings up for that. Say, hey, check out these talents on NXT 2.0. We're giving you a fresh match here. Now it'll be on NXT TV. That's all I really have to say about that. Nikita Lyons saying, everybody's horniness level over 9,000. So, we here at Price is Right Wrestling would like to remind you to control the pop pet population, have your pets and yourself spayed or neutered to keep your horniness levels down. Goodbye, everybody.